I asked our audience, what would you ask Todd? <laughs> Big question from many. Why did you not optimize this game for PC? Uh, we did. It's running great. It is a next-gen PC game. We really do push the technology, so you may need to upgrade your PC for this game, but it's got a lot of great stuff going on in it, and the fans are responding awesome. Kara and I have been reviewing the gameplay. We've also been reviewing some of the discussion online. Phil, good to see you. Xbox Game Pass, okay, it's available to anyone that, that subscribes. So how can you guarantee from a sort of sales perspective that you kind of hit the, the, the heights that Skyrim has? If it's available to anyone through Game Pass, how do you ensure people actually play it? Well, we can see people playing, uh, which is great, on the platform. Uh, you might know the game has been in preview for the last week, and it's already our most played next-gen exclusive game on Xbox. So we're seeing huge success. It's our biggest wish-listed game on Steam across Xbox and Bethesda Game Studios history. And now, as you said, tens of millions of Game Pass subscribers and the standard edition retail customers all get to play today. So incredible day, new franchise launching, and it's a a lot of fun and I'm sure you want to dwell on the here the now Phil but you've been asked and I'm gonna ask it again you mentioned exclusive so does that mean the Elder Scrolls 6 will be how do you mark as to whether this is the right track Yeah, we look at it on a case-by-case -case basis with the games that we build. We want to make sure our games are available in so many different places, on our Xbox consoles, on PC, also via cloud. These games can come to almost any web-enabled device. We're looking at you know millions and millions of players who will have access to Starfield and other Xbox Game Studios games. It's really about giving players choice around how they want to play and they build their library of games. What then, Todd? about timing. What then about other names, other games, Baldur for example, Baldur's Gate, that have done significantly well? How do you think about ultimately making sure everyone's addicted to your current offering right here, right now? You know, I think if you look at video games now, it is so competitive. I think this year, 2023, could be the greatest year ever in video games? I don't know, but to have Starfield be out there and the response that we've gotten has just been incredible for everybody here at the studio. And the other thing is, yes, it's about launch, it's about today, but our games, they are played for years. You know, we're 12 years after Skyrim, still one of our most played games. So we like to build these worlds that people can really, really get lost in, uh, the fan feedback and what it means to everybody. Um, it really is incredible uh, for all of us here. Uh, Todd, I want to go to another one of the audience questions, and it's very specific, but so many people asked it. Why are there no vehicles on planets? Space is one thing, but what about terra firma? It's a great question, actually. It's something we consider. You know, we're going to do outer space, we're going to do planets. Once you do vehicles, it does change the gameplay. So by focusing, once you land in your ship that you're on foot, it lets us really, for the players, make it an experience where we know how fast they're seeing things. Um, when, in one sense, you do have a vehicle, which is you obviously have your spaceship, you can go around in space, but then on the surface, you do have a jetpack, which you can upgrade, which is super fun, new experience for us. And obviously planets have different levels of gravity, which make that unique for many planets. Uh, Phil, this is you know, so closely tied to Xbox, and I find it interesting. I have to ask you about the latest offer from Microsoft and Activision to the UK CMA. Do you think that that structure will be accepted with the UK CMA? You know, we're working cooperatively with the regulators as we've had through this whole process. As you're well aware, it's been a long process. We remain confident in the work that we're doing with the CMA and the European Commission and here with the FTC in the US that we will close this acquisition. Another rather specific question for you, Todd. What's been your favorite means and operation, like what, what you, your build out there? What's been your favorite build or indeed favorite, well, way, means of traveling through space? Favorite means of traveling through space? Well, you know, when I'm doing my ship, I like to focus on shields and defense because you never know what's going to happen when you jump into a new system uh, in the game. As far as character builds, one of the things we love to do, which is, 
there's so much you can do in the game. It's almost like five or six games at once. And mm. we usually tell yes. people, just get comfortable, do what you want to do. If you want to zen out and scan planets and explore them, great. If you want to join the pirates, great. If you want to do this epic main quest, it's really whatever you want to do, whatever you're comfortable with. And really for us it is, we do this world, but it's about the players making yes. it you know, their own. Uh, Todd, this game took seven years to make. Does generative AI now allow studios like you to expedite the creation process quickly? Well, it seemed, we want to do that every time. We want to do it faster. Um, and there are areas where we can go faster, but these are complex projects. There are big technological innovation going on. There's so much design. This game has over 3 million words in it. So we do like to make really big games. Those will take some time. And as you mentioned before, the competition in our industry is quite high. The bar is high. And we want to get there for all of our fans every time.